Hey, so let's look at how we can effectively query the nested sets tree model. Of course, in the description, you can find a link to the series and link to the code. And yeah, so the first example we will look at is how to get the descendants of any given node. And I will show you two ways. I think the most realistic way would be this one. This, yeah, this one. So I'm selecting from nodes, I'm calling them descendants, where left is between um, like 1 and 14. And I'm filtering also by the tree ID because I'm in the same table, I'm storing multiple trees. And I'll show an example soon. We will run the action. We will run the code soon and I'm ordering by descendants uh, dot left. And the example I had, I have in my database is the same one you are seeing here. And this way I had a I added the comment here. So if you know I have a typo here. If you know the left and right, the only thing you need to query by is just hard coding them in the query. So, I mean, I'm just thinking in the context of an application, you already know the node you are going to get as descendant. Like maybe you have some sort of UI, the user clicked on something, then you you already fetched that, like that node. You know the left and right, you know the tree ID. So you can just write this query. It's extremely simple. You filter by the left and right, and that's it. You get, the, you get every descendant for that node, uh, and that's it. So... I have this the same tree in my database. So let's go and run this. I will minimize the code. I don't think you can even see it. Yeah, you can see that, but not this. Can do that. Um, put it on top. So yeah, because I, this is the root node, so I can just query this. I'm getting the full tree. Um, yeah. So towards b e because i'm filtering because i'm ordering by left value so i will get then d then c then a then f that's nice now if i want to get the descendants of any node the only thing i need to pass is the left and right for that node so let's do two and nine which will give us the descendants of b so let's query oops two and nine not one and nine my bad this will give us B, E, D, C, E, which is this branch. So we can get any branch by doing this. Uh, and I'm going to show you another example. This is when you don't know a lot of information about the query, about like the node. So you need to filter by something somehow. So in this example, I'm filtering by the parent name. Of course, in a realistic, like real world business logic, um, this might be a much more complex example. And you might not even filter with the tree ID because you don't even have it. Um, but this is the way or this is a basic way that you can start from so I'm still joining the table on itself the first table I'm calling descendants and I'm selecting only the descendants names because this will give me the parent as well and I'm select and the second time I'm joining the table on itself I'm calling it parent and I'm filtering the descendants uh, where their left is between the parents left and right and getting the parent or filtering by, by, by the parent name, which is in this case is B, which means I'm getting all of the descendants of this branch, of this of this node, which will get, give me this branch. Then I'm filtering by this, the tree ID. So this will do the same thing. Now I can filter by the root node and I don't need to change anything, the query, that's it. And I'm, I did something wrong because I think Yes, in all capital. So yeah, I think this should be converted to a lower case, but you can do that. Uh, yeah, so that's the full tree or the full, yeah, the full descendants for any given node in the tree. And yeah, so I will cut the video and then you will see me doing another thing. So I'm back now to get the leaf node from the tree. The left and right values are always um, consecutive which means the difference between them is one. And this is how we are going to build a query that does that. And I already explained this in the first video. So it's just as simple as this. Select name from nodes where right equal left plus one. This will give us all of the leaf nodes. I already have it here. So the leaf nodes should be E, D, C, F. 
and we won't get them in that order because I did not order the result. But yeah, that's it. Uh, F, F, C, D, E. Yeah. So I will stop the video. Then I will come back with another query. We can run. Okay. So on this section, I'm going to show you how we can get the depth of each node in the tree, uh, starting from the root. And I will show you that gradually. So I will start with this query here. I'm joining the table on itself, first instance calling it node, second instance calling it parent, selecting the name and left and right for both instances. And I'm filtering by the tree ID. This is because I'm storing multiple trees in the same table and I need a way to distinguish which node belongs to which tree. So nothing fancy here. If I run this and ordering by name so I can uh, explain, explain to you the example. So for each row from the nodes table that I call it called it node it will be joined with every row from the parents table which is the same table itself because I'm doing a self join which will give us this result for each row so a will be joined with with each row which means it will be joined with itself and if we look at this subset of the result we need somehow now to end up to find the depth we need somehow to find the parents of a how many parents a got to do this there is a simple condition we can apply the nodes left which is a the no the left of the left value of a should be between the parents left and right this is how we can filter and get only the parents of the current node we are looking at and this should be straightforward like this Uh, so the node left should be between the nodes parent left and right so if I run this now I'm getting a only repeated it twice and the nodes left is always between the parents left and right so if you think about it now I think this now becomes much more clearer I will count the name sorry I will count the parent name and the group by name so if I do this if you can run it, like run the query in your mind, this will give me A, the count of the parents are 2, which means A is in level 2, B, the count is 2, level 2, C, the count is 3, so C is in level 3, same thing for D, same thing for E, same thing for, same thing for F, and for Rawa, that's my name, this will be group uh, depth 1. That's of course if you start counting by uh, 1. But we can change that. It's super easy. But this is the idea. We will join the table on itself. Only select for each node. We will select only the parents of that node. Then we group by uh, the name of the node. And count the parents' names. That's it. I hope this was clear. But uh, yeah, it took me a while to understand it. And this is me explaining it. So this is the query. Uh, I'm selecting the node. I'm doing the same self-join. And selecting the node name and counting the parent's name then you can do minus one you can just don't do it minus one is to start counting from zero to stick with the traditions uh yeah it's the same exact query i'm just adding this group by the node name and node left so if we run it we get rewards one let's actually minimize this so we compare so rewards is one b is two a is two. We can do that by depth. Yeah, this is much nicer. So what is one? A B is two two. These are threes, all of them. I think if, if you end up sending this to a client to visualize it, this is, you are going to send this. Um I think that that might be helpful. It depends. You can also start counting by zero by doing this. So yeah. Now I will show you something that might be helpful for debugging purposes. It's the same query, but I'm doing a small twist to it. Um, so I'm repeating this. I'm repeating this character um, with the as much as the depth value, and doing the same thing. Then concatenating concatenating that with the name at the end, and it's the same query. 
So to do when I do this, I get the tree kind of visualized directly in my database management system, which is DB Eva. Um, so yeah, I, do, I mean, of course you won't send to, this to any client, but it could be good for debugging purposes just to visualize the tree uh, directly there. So maybe put this in a stored procedure, add some filtering criteria to the, like you can pass to the procedure, just call it, it will keep visualizing the tree for you. Um, yeah. And I hope that was also clear. So that's it for this section. See you in the next one.